Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Bruce. Uh, what you see in front of you here is my GMC bike, which was made by Kent. I bought this just over a year ago off walmart.com for just $99. Now keep in mind that was on a discount. I, I was on sale. Normal price I think is $199. I've seen it regularly for $149 and, and round to that price. Anyway, I, I made a series of videos on it, so you can check those out if you want. But I did eventually ride it from the east coast of Florida to the west coast of Florida, which was an awesome ride. I have a video on that. But there was a couple things that really bothered me about it. And the first thing was is it didn't break that good. It still doesn't break that good. It just doesn't stop very fast. It's probably the worst braking bike I have ever rode. <laughs> But uh, the second thing that bothered me about it was the drivetrain. It seemed like no matter what I did, how I indexed the gears, they always kind of made some noise. They always kind of rubbed or clanked or something. Part of that was I found, eventually kind of discovered, was that the chain ring in the front wasn't really flat. And if you look down while riding it, you can see it kind of wobbling. So the front chain ring was always kind of problematic. And that's what today's video is going to be about. I'm going to go ahead and replace that whole front chain ring, front crank set, bottom bracket uh, with a one by. And of course, because I only spent $99 on the whole bike, this is supposed to be a super budget build. So where did I go? Of course, AliExpress, Alibaba, kind of like eBay or, you know, some uh, wish.com, some of these other discount places. I went to AliExpress. I bought from them before. I've had good luck. Now it takes forever to get stuff. And in the case of this uh, crank set I got, it took, I think, over two months or two and a half months maybe. Might be a little bit off there. Maybe I'll put something on the screen. But it took forever. And the chain ring, which I ordered also, just never came. And it's been over three months now. It says it's still on its way, but it hasn't arrived. So for the chain ring, I actually spent, I think, $10 on Amazon.com and got that in just a few days. So, um, and I, I, okay, we'll talk about the chain ring when, when we get to it, but... First thing is, let's go ahead and take off these horrible pedals and this pretty bad crank set, bottom bracket, and uh, shifter cable. Let's go ahead and get started on that. Wow, you know what I totally forgot to do that I, I should have done right at the beginning is weigh the bike so we can get a before and after weight. Um, all I have taken off is the derailleur, so I'm just gonna like tape that to the bike and then give the whole thing away real quick so we can get a before and after. All right, that's actually lighter than I thought it would be. It's exactly 13.6 kilograms. That's 100% in its stock form. You know, as this is kind of a hacking based channel, uh, I don't oftentimes buy brand name tools like this Park Tools uh, CCP 22 crank remover. But this one I did buy for some reason, I don't remember why, but I'm glad I did because I use it all the time and it's actually a great tool. In fact, I'll go ahead and link it down in the description if you want to get one yourself. I would recommend it if you're going to do much bike work. It's not super expensive, I don't think and it uh, works just great. And there you have it. It really doesn't look that bad when you look at it you know, now. Looks decent enough for an old steel, you know, riveted together thing, but I don't know, I might just toss this thing in the garbage because I don't want to have to deal with it again and it's unflatness and I don't know, it just, it's just junky. Here's another super horrible thing about this bike and that's the stock pedals. Um, first of all, this one you can see is all bashed in and that was from simply like dropping the bike once accidentally dropping it or having it fall. It just crushed this thin gauge aluminum uh, shell. It's not smooth to spin, it looks bad, it's too small, it's super weak. There's not much good I can say about this pedal, so yeah. If you get one of these bikes and you don't mess with the drivetrain, you're not really a mechanic, I would almost just say get some new pedals because these are horrible. It'll make your biking experience a lot better.
Okay, let's talk one second about the old shifter. I think I'm just gonna actually shift this to where the cable is out as far as possible and simply cut it for now. I don't really wanna take this off. I don't really wanna you know, mess with the bar tape. So for now, I'm just simply gonna cut the cable and just leave it like that. And in case you're wondering, no, I don't have the proper cutters still. There we go, done. Okay, let's talk real quick about the parts that I did get and go ahead and open them up. So first of all, the chain ring. This is a 34 tooth chain ring and you may wonder why did I pick green? That's such an ugly color to go with a red bike. The reason why is because I wanted to save about $3. The green one and the pink one I think were on sale uh, $9.99 instead of like $12.99 or something like that. So I saved like three bucks by going with the ugly green. And uh, yeah, I'm cheap like that. So that's why I went with that color. Um, uh, like I said, I got this off Amazon. I'll go ahead and link it in the description below. I have a, an affiliate account there. So if you do want to get something, one of these, they have different sizes, go ahead and please click on that and buy it. It won't cost you anything more, but it will give me a small kickback. And that helps my channel be a little bit more uh, worth doing, let's say. All right, so um, this one's 34. The one I originally ordered from AliExpress, which hasn't came yet, and I don't know if it ever will come, <clears throat> that was a 36. That was actually the size I was looking to get. But because I figured eventually it may come, I might as well get a different size here. So I got the 34 here. Let's go ahead and open it up. Oh, well, that was easy. Here it's talking about the different speeds that it'll work for, but 9, 10, 11, 12. I don't think that's true. I mean, the inside should be the same uh, on pretty much all chains. So I don't... We have a seven speed over here and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's gonna work just fine. That's the company, never heard of them before. And it's a single chain ring. As you can see, I haven't opened this yet. So we're gonna see the, we're gonna get to see this together. Now this crank set did come from, from AliExpress. It did eventually arrive two months later. It was incredibly cheap at only 25 bucks shipped. And I'm not above reaching out to these companies and off and asking if they would, you know, like me to review their products if they want to send them to me for free, like other companies have done in the past. So I did, I did reach out to these guys and they didn't respond back. So this is not a review of any type. I did buy this with my own money, unfortunately. So uh, it looks pretty nice, actually. I mean, looks looks all right. Here's our chain ring bolts and our, our screw for the dust cover and whatnot. And there's the other part now. I don't remember now. It's been so long since I ordered this, like over two months. I don't remember if this was supposed to come with the bottom bracket, but I thought it was. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do now because I thought this was supposed to include the bottom bracket. I'm going to have to check my order again to see if it was supposed to come with that or if I ordered it separately or if I forgot to order it. But uh, yeah, right now we're kind of stuck. I may have one sitting around. I'm going to have to dig through my parts bin to see if I have a bottom bracket for this, but. Okay, so yesterday I was digging through my bin of random parts and I did find a bottom bracket. It's a strange one in that uh, one side is used and one side seems to be new. And the used one is not really turning too, too much. It does move a little bit, but it's pretty tough. So I'm gonna actually try to take it apart and see if I can get it moving better. Maybe I can clean the bearings out and re-grease them. I've never done this before, but I did read that it, it is sometimes possible. I read somewhere that you have a 60% chance of just breaking it though, so... Um, yeah, I'll probably break it, that means. But, let's see. As it is now, I don't think it's usable. 
So I think it doesn't hurt to try. I'm going to try to do this. I feel like it's starting to come up a little bit. All right, we got it off. No problem. No damage. Let's set that aside. Now there's also a seal, which is right here, that you want to try to remove also, of course, without damaging it. All right, no problem. Now let's also keep in mind how this seal goes back on. I mean, it looks pretty obvious, I guess. Kind of the metal part goes down. So now we can see the bearings. Um, yep, they're, it's not really, I'm not able to move it with my fingers at all. So <clears throat> I'm going to try to use some brake cleaner, clean this grease completely out as much as possible, and then uh, I'll try to see if it starts moving then. Okay, I've been trying to clean this up as much as I can, and what I think what I think is going on is these bearings are totally seized. I thought that they were moving a little bit, but actually I think this this cover was what was moving. The bearings themselves are totally seized, and I think they're even a bit rusty. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure what I can do about this. I'm going to keep working on it. If I can maybe get the inside race to turn, maybe I can start clearing it up, but at the moment the inside race isn't turning at all. It's totally seized. Uh, I think some of these bearing ball bearings on the top, especially here, have some rust. So I don't know if I can fix this or not, but I'm going to keep messing with it. And uh, I'll let you guys know how it goes. Okay, I was getting ready to say that that boiling vinegar didn't do anything at all, but actually there is, I don't know if you can hear that, there is a little bit of movement. By the way, I wanted to say a big thank you to the Bicycle Repair Helping Group uh, Facebook group. They're the ones who came up with the idea of the vinegar and they also said you can dip the bearings in oil. Anyway, thanks a lot. I'll put a link to that group in the description below. Oh, it's getting to be more. This was like the Dollar Tree, so this is one dollar. I thought it was going to be like WD-40, but it really doesn't seem like it works as good. Not surprising for a dollar. I might give it another vinegar treatment. I still have it in the pot. Ooh, feels like it's moving more and more. Okay, it's the next morning, and my bearings have been sitting in their vinegar bath all night. Surprisingly, this worked out much better than I expected. The bearings roll very, very freely now. Um, after I got them out this morning, I, I spent some time spraying brake cleaner in here just to remove any of the like rust or, or whatever it was that was built up inside the bearings, and quite a bit did come out. Now I got them pretty clean. I don't really see any brownness on the bearings themselves. So I think we're pretty much done now, and I'm not really getting any more gunk. They are rolling free, and they don't really have any play, so they might be okay to use. I'm not calling it a victory quite yet until until I actually get them on the bike and they're working, but it might be, these might work. So next thing I'm going to do is pack them up full of grease, and then I'm going to put it back together.
Okay guys, I have to be honest with you, it looks like I made a mistake or something because this uh, this crank shaft is quite a bit too long for this bottom bracket shell. Um, now maybe if I would have bought the bottom, this is a 68 millimeter bottom bracket shell and it looks like this shaft is more suited for the 73. And now I remember most of the time it does say 68 or 73, so I think the solution there is just put a bunch of spacers in. But I, because I didn't get the bottom bracket with this kit, and by the way that was my fault, I looked up the order, it turns out I ordered the wrong one which didn't include it. Because I didn't get that included, I don't have the spacers either, so I just 3D printed a handful of spacers. Luckily there was somebody on Thingiverse that already has created them in a variety of thicknesses. So now I'm going to go ahead and take everything apart and try to install these spacers and get it the you know get everything spaced out right. Okay I think I figured out that I'm going to need about 8.1 millimeters of spacers. Yeah, well, 7.9 to 8.1. So I rounded up some spacers and I did find an, another one I actually did have, like a real one. And got it to about that thickness. So now I just have to take the bottom brackets out again and then set these where I want them also considering the chain line and so forth. So let me go ahead and start doing that right now. All right, I'll be honest, it looks kind of goofy with the blue. But I think it might just work. Let's give it a shot. All right, that's feeling pretty good now, very solid. Zero side to side play. Feels good, all right, so let's go ahead and finish this thing up. Next, I'm gonna finish off my Christmas color uh, bike here with the chain ring, and I believe it's gonna need to go on this side to get a proper uh, chain line, chain alignment. Okay, got the chain ring on. That was pretty straightforward and simple. It does look kind of funny with this part being exposed, but that's the way it has to be when you have the chain ring on this side of the crank. So, next I'm going to go ahead and put the pedals on, then the chain, and then we're done. Oh, and you guys are going to love these pedals I have picked out. These are some I had just knocking around the, the garage, and they will go perfect to finish off this ugly sandwich. That's right, blue. I'd like to go with some SPDs, and I do have some SPDs, a lot, uh, quite a few of them hanging around. But the problem with that is I don't have any pedals right now. So, yeah, we got to go with flats, and these are the only, I think these are the only flats I have right now. So I'm going to throw these on. This thing is looking super ugly. We got blue, we got green, we got red, black. It's not a good color scheme, but anyway, let's toss them on and get this thing out on the road. Before we go take a ride, let's see how much this thing weighs. We're at 12.7 kilograms, 12.7. So I think we were 13.6 before, that means we lost 900 grams. Okay, here we go on my goofy hacked up system here with 3D printed spacers, crazy colors. Okay, I feel like I'm spinning pretty fast here. The 
gearing is a bit low. I mean, it's not too, too bad on this bike. I don't normally need to go this fast, but I am in my smallest ring in the back. This is about as fast as I can go. I guess it's good enough. I'm not going to be going that fast on this bike. I think the 36 that I originally ordered would probably be right on the money. But it's riding good. I'm not hearing any sounds yet. Totally quiet. Surprised almost by that. Okay, I think that's about it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, please do leave a comment if you have any questions or comments, anything, whatever. Um, I'm happy to read them. I try to reply to almost every single one. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.